starting off as the Clanton 14, but branching off and starting their own gang, the 18th Streets definitely have a story to tell. This gang has some insane history that involves multiple assassinations, taking over drug territories, gang wars, and a lot of extortion. Los Angeles, California has a notorious reputation for being a birthplace, founding location, and the start of the nation's most notorious gangs. Also, the city has seen a lot of gangs start here and branch off to other states. But this gang, this gang has branched off to other countries and continues to thrive to this day. Today, we're gonna talk about 18th Street, Barrio 18, the M18s. Yeah, all right. Welcome to Cali's Most Dangerous. Let's get into it. One night involving 18th Street and rival gangs, March 15th this year. At 6 p.m., five men shot on Hillcrest. 30 minutes later, a man is shot three times. Another gang shooting 35 minutes after that on Santa Rosalia, a 16-year-old shot twice. Then at 8.30, the same night, two more gang-related shootings. On a warm summer night in Los Angeles, California, Rivera Rodriguez was out solo roaming the streets. You know, just turning up, drinking, and enjoying the night. Just minding his business. Rodriguez goes to a liquor store to grab another drink. It was the same as usual. Grab a drink, go and joke with the cashier, pay for the drinks, then head off. But on the way out, things quickly went left. As Rodriguez is walking out of the store, well-known 18th Street member Juan Alperez is smoking a cigarette and walking towards the store with other 18th Street members. Well, as the two cross paths, they slightly bump into each other. Rodriguez takes offense. He puts his beard down, calls Rodriguez, and they exchange words. Shit escalates. Now Perez spits in Rodriguez's face. Instantly, Rodriguez responds with a punch to Alperez's face, knocking his glasses off in the process. After that, Alperez slowly steps back, puts a cigarette in his mouth, reaches for his pistol, and fires six fatal shots into Rodriguez. Alperez slowly walks away from Rodriguez's lifeless body. But before disappearing into the neighborhood, he throws up his hood, 18th Street. The pigs were able to track Al Perez back to his apartment where he said he was at the whole time and he knew nothing of the shoot. But due to video evidence and statements from witnesses, he was arrested and charged for the murder. Ultimately, Al Perez was found guilty of second degree murder and sentenced to 20 years of life in prison. Danger rating for 18th Street. 18th Street gets a danger score of a 9 out of 10. These guys have always had reputable members who keep the game prominent in the streets and have always had and have crazy stories in the streets. Look, I don't care what hood you from in Southern California, right? You Crip, Blood, Serenio, whatever. Like, you definitely heard their name or some stories about these guys. Like, off tops, you definitely heard their name. If you haven't, you lying or you probably opt. So, I mean, I guess that don't count. But let's get into all that. We're going to get into all that as we explain who these guys are. Well, when we go kill you, we're gonna send a couple of guys down there really make a mess of you. The execution style is a really beautiful way to do it because that sends out a message. On the afternoon of November 25th, 2010, Cindy Chanchez drove her boyfriend, Carlos Santanella, to his sister, Yusinda Chantanella's apartment. Carlos had been a member of the 18th Street game for about 10 years. Yusinda claimed lost players clip but she was not an actual member of the 18th Street Gang. Sometime after 10 p.m., Cindy drove the Cantonellas to a location on 79th Street within 18th Street's gang territory. Yesenia told Cindy she needed to go talk to somebody about something personal. When they arrived, Yesenia and Carlos exited the car and began yelling at Ada Zeladon using her 18th Street moniker, Giggles. The Centinellas disliked Ada because Ada made statements that Yesenia had been prostituting and making the gang look bad. Ada and her friend also jumped to Sentinella's sister. Ada came out and argued with Yesenia. Carlos tried to hit Ada with a bottle. Ada then called Myla and Francisco Lazella, who were 18th Street members, for help. The Sentinellas then left when Ada's mother came outside. After the Sentinellas got back in the car, Yesenia had Cindy drive her to a location on 82nd Street, another area Cindy knew to be claimed by the 18th Street gang members. Yesenia wanted to look for Lozano, who Carlos knew to be a shot caller for the Lost Gangsters click. Carlos testified that a shot caller has the authority to tell other gang members what to do. As he neared the location, the Sentinelas jumped out of the moving car. 
Sydney saw them heading towards Azano, who was standing in the front of the apartment gate with about 15 other people. Carlos attempted to punch Azano, but he ducked. Yesenia pepper sprayed Lozano and yelled profanities at him. Yesenia and Lozano argued loudly about graffiti that had been on the wall nearby. Bitch, you ain't from my hood, was written on the wall, and Yesenia's game moniker, like crazy, had been crossed out, and Yesenia demanded to know why Lozano had crossed out her name. He responded that she was not from 18th Street. She needed to stop playing with the game, and he didn't fuck with her. But since he walked over a few minutes after Yesenia pepper spray Lasagna, she identified herself as the gang moniker Casper. Carlos knew her to be a shot caller. Well, Vicente and Carlos argued for over an hour. And at one point in the argument, Vicente punched Carlos in the face and told Carlos she was an OG from 18th Street. Yesenia asked her brother if he wanted her to fight Vicente, but he said no. Feeling offended, Vicente then told Carlos, man, you know you're talking to the main head? She took out her cell phone and called Yesenia Escobar, also known as Shorty, and told her to come over. But Cindy then gave Lozano a look. After all this, Lozano warned the Sentinelas to watch tomorrow several times and said it was over for him. Thinking everything was done, though, the Sentinelas returned to Cindy's car, drove back to Yesenia's apartment, and they all spent the night. Well, fast forward to the next day. Ada called Lozano, and she was heated. Ada felt disrespected by the Selenellas coming to her house and calling her out. And she expressed that to Lozano. Well, Lozano followed up by telling Ada that he sent it paper sprayed him. Well, that set the course for revenge against the Selenellas. Later that night, Ada, her friend Myla, and Lozano got into Bassetti's car and drove around looking for Yesenia. Bassetti then drove them to Yesenia's apartment, but they came grouped up and ready for action. Escobar also drove up to the apartment were Patricia Acosta and Patricia Ortez. Ada, Lozano, and Mila got out of Bazzetti's car and jumped over the apartment complex's gate. Escobar and Acosta followed. Bazzetti and Ortez remained in the vehicles. Sydney, Yesenia, Carlos, and their children were having dinner when they heard a loud knock. Yesenia actually was at the door. Someone outside answered, hey, what's up, it's me. Carlos opened the door to find Escobar and a coast outside. The two women entered the apartment and demanded to know why Yesenia pepper sprayed Lozano. Escobar left, but he returned a few minutes later with Mala. Mala said she came to Yesenia's apartment because she heard somebody was claiming her hood. She asked Yesenia, aren't you from Colombia? Yesenia said, no, I'm from Los Players. Carlos also replied that he was from Los Psychos, a subset of the 18th Street Gang. The woman told Yesenia to come outside. She refused though, saying that her family was inside. And if they want to say something, they could say it in there. When Mala asked Carlos to go outside, and he agreed. When Carlos stepped out of the apartment, he saw Lasagna pulling up the hood of his jacket. Afraid of what Mazzano might do, Carlos tried to run around and go back inside the apartment. But Escobar pepper sprayed him. Mala grabbed Carlos by the shirt, and Mila, Ada, and Acosta beat Carlos. Cindy could hear him struggling and screaming. Carlos tried to go back into the apartment, but he was held by his shirt collar as he was punched. Yesenia unsuccessfully tried to pull Carlos back into the apartment. During the struggle though, Lozano pulled out a gun wrapped in a sock and shot Carlos in the head. Acosta, Myla, and Ada fled, jumping over the fence. Cindy heard Yesenia yelling, don't do this, I have kids as she was running with the children to Yesenia's bedroom, where she heard a gunshot. Meanwhile, in the living room, Lozano points a sock-covered gun at Yesenia's head, and Yesenia screams before he shoots her in the head, and she falls to the ground. When well, Yesenia gets up, she runs to the bathroom and tries to close the door. Lozano was originally headed towards Yesenia, but then he walked towards the bedroom where Sydney was squatting down on the mattress. He aims for Sydney's head, cocks his pistol back. But before he could shoot, Cindy kicked Lozano and moved to avoid the gun. Well, after a few minutes, Lozano left without an explanation. Ada, Zedion, and Mila ran back to Bassetti's car and Bassetti drives back to her house in another neighborhood. Unfortunately, Yesenia died as a result of the gunshot wound to her head a few days later. Carlos survived, but during this, 
He lost his hearing in one ear and suffered lasting speech and memory impairment. Lozano was a shot caller for the Los Gangsters, a clique of the 18th Street Gang and also belonged to the Wall Street clique as well. OGs, or shot callers, have high status within their gang, dictating gang policy and directing lower ranking soldiers to commit crimes at their discretion. Someone who falsely came to be a shot caller will be severely beaten or killed misrepresenting the gang. Respect is a central concern in gang culture. Gangs respond violently to disrespect because it weakens their reputation and impedes their ability to control their territory and commit crimes. Ultimately, Lozano was sentenced to 50 years of life in prison and Bissetli was sentenced to 25 years of life in prison. Man, ruthless is the first thing that comes to mind when I think about 18th Street. But trust, man, the 18s are way more than that. Who are the 18th Streets? Los Angeles City Attorney James Hahn has declared legal war on a South Los Angeles street gang. Under a state nuisance abatement law, he filed a lawsuit against members of the 18th Street gang, accusing them of turning a 17 square block area into a war zone. The Barrio 18s are a multicultural gang originating in the Pico Union District of Los Angeles, California, particularly by MacArthur Park. And they damn near ran that park with the iron fist. The city is definitely trying to hide this past, but murders, shootouts, drug deals, extortions, whatever else you can name, yeah, they did that up there. <laughs> now they have Mexicans, Salvadorians, Guatemalans, Asians, Blacks, and even some whites from the set as well. This can't be no bitch or a snitch. That's how you end up in a ditch. Bars, nigga. <laughs> 18th Street will use symbols like this Roman numerals X, V, and then number three and also Roman numerals XV and then the Roman numeral three as well, as well as 666. If you add that up, six plus six, 12 plus another six, 18, nine, nine, which basically stands for nine plus nine, 18. Uh, the three dots on the graffiti and on our tattoos as well. In terms of colors, you'll see them with a lot of blue rags, Raiders attires and Dodgers attire as well. The M18s are known to be closer with the Crips and beef more so with bloods and stuff like that. The Barrio 18's historic territory is composed of five neighborhoods in Los Angeles. East Los Angeles 18th Street, North Los Angeles, South Central, and South Side, as well as the West Side. To be clear, these guys are a combination of over 12 dozen subsets and cliques that come together to form 18th Street. These subsects makes themselves unique by calling themselves different clique names, and then some of them will include like their block and things like that. Some of the cliques include the Tiny Locos, the Pee Wee Winos, the Hoover Tiny Locos, the Boulevard King Gangsters, the Los Gangsters, the Diablos, the Columbia Little Psychos, the Shadow Park Locos, and each of these sets have their own streets and rules and means of regulation and operation as well. There's usually one shot caller at the forefront of the game. And 18th Street doesn't operate on a few blocks or areas, man. These guys are spread out through all different parts of Los Angeles, from north, south, east, west, south, central, man. Even Long Beach, these guys have a prominent presence that is definitely known. Also, because of this, numbers-wise, they're one of the biggest gangs in Los Angeles with over 30,000 members alone. So it's safe to say, man, you're going to see them on, on every corner, on every block, every park, and trust these niggas ain't your friendly neighbors. Nah, nigga, where you from? You man? What set you claim? I'm just trying to put you up on game because that's how they gonna press you, man. So be ready. And if you op, prepare to duck a few shots. Just pray, man, you gonna get dropped. Bars, nigga. <laughs> nah, these guys are one of the most feared and respected gangs in the city of Los Angeles. 18th Street has known stories around the city ranges from territory takeovers to cop killings. Matter of fact, on August 9th, 1998, LAPD officer Phil Cuesta and his partner were patrolling the known 18th Street area in Los Angeles, California. The cops were cruising the area looking for tips when they got one about a gang party in the area. After getting information about the party, the cops pulled up about half a block from the location and began to survey the party. Looking for one of 18th Street gang members and watching for illegal activities, the cops had their attention at the house party. 
This gave known 18th Street member Caterino Gonzalez the perfect opportunity to sneak behind a cop's cruiser, which is exactly what he did. Being distracted by the surveillance of the house, they failed to notice Gonzalez approach the back of the cruiser as he let off multiple shots into the car with his 9mm Glock. Cuesta put the car in drive and attempted to drive away, but while driving, Cuesta was hit with a fatal shot to the back of his head. Gonzalez was later arrested and convicted for the murder, but he never offered an explanation on why he committed the shootings. Cops rumored that Gonzalez was pulled over by officers and felt disrespected, so he followed up with the revenge shooting against the cops. Gonzalez is just one of the many, many reasons why 18th Street has a reputation and trust. This gang has a lot more stories, stories that made the gang so feared today. But let's get into some history so we can see why and how 18th Street earned his reputation. History 18th Street. In other news, a judge has ordered members of a vicious gang not to congregate on the streets of a Los Angeles neighborhood. The 18th Street Gang reputedly has up to 20,000 members throughout California. It was the worst of news for LA's 18th Street Gang. It means that we can't hang around with our, with our friends that, that we grew up with, you know? We're all friends in the neighborhood, you know? Judges order that bans three or more gang members from gathering in public anywhere in Jefferson Park. The judge said they can't even walk down the street together. Violators would be in contempt of court and could go directly to jail. That man, that man trying to uh, set his own rules, you know what I mean? But it ain't going down like that, not in the neighborhood, you know what I mean? It criminalizes things that aren't otherwise crimes and re reduces our protections against invasion of our civil liberties and civil rights. And gang members remain defiant. LAPD, that's a gang too. And I'm a LAPD killer, you know, because I hate them. Starting off as a small group of misfits, 18th Street was created as a branched off set of the Clanton 14, a well-known Mexican gang, but that Pico Union gang was mainly Mexicans and didn't accept members from other ethnicities. Because of this, 18th Street members broke apart from the gang and started their own set. And this started a war and a long life of robbery that is still going to this day. All this took place during the 60s. By the 70s, the gang was growing into one of the bigger gangs in Los Angeles. But by the 1980s, this gang exploded in terms of membership to become the biggest gang in Los Angeles at the time. This was due to a mass migration in Central American city of the United States, particularly Salvadorians and Guatemalans because of the civil war that was playing out in other countries. So what happens when you get people migrating from one war-torn, oppressed area and move right to another? You get people who start to join groups to protect themselves. You get people looking for a brotherhood, more people to relate to. Get 18th Street members. And during this time, these Vatos did what they wanted, when they wanted. The only group this gang was under was the Mexican Mafia, aka Laeme. In 1992, the Mexican Mafia called with several street gangs including 18th Street in order to set up rules and regulations among gangs, including paying taxes. So, to put things simply, or to be clear, as far as California goes, 18th Street are Southerners or Serenios. Now, out of state or out of country, you know, I don't know how that works, but out here, they're Southerners. What about out of state, though, man? Are you guys pretty much the same or is it a lot about is a little bit different? You know, uh, when I made my other videos, there was people comments like, oh, 18th Street, not Serenios, this and that. Shut your ass up, nigga. You don't know. You probably not even from Cali. But doing my research, I did see it was some people like out of the country, though. They was like went by like the revolutionaries or something like that. Like, but they're 18th Street too, but it, it, it was weird. But y'all let me know in the comments though. Y'all you know, feel me in on that when all the OGs or anybody tapped into the streets. Y'all let me know. Let's have a conversation about it. But anyways, like I already mentioned, in the 80s, you really seen 18th Street explode in terms of membership. But by the 1990s, the game kept at a steady growth, but exploded in a whole new way. The case that proved a direct link of power between 18th Street and the murderous Mexican Mafia. And to make their point, the feds zeroed in on a clique of 18th Streeters known as the most lucrative, the Columbia Little Psychos. Gotta confirm by. For every rock of <laughs> grandma <laughs> back your <laughs> sold on these streets in and around MacArthur Park, the Little Psychos, a faction of the 18th Street gang, got a cut. Every drug dealer paid a tax or rent for permission to operate here on LA's west side during the 90s. 18th Street have been known to traffic all types of drugs since the gang's formation. So whatever you needed, they had it. 
but everything really took off. With members of 18 Streets, Columbia Little Psycho subset, Juan Romero, also known as Termite, and Frank Martinez, also known as Puppet, took over the subset's operations. They started working together in 1992. Termite been a frontliner, or the foot soldier, and Puppet been an OG, a shot caller for the Mexican Mafia at the time. From the jump, these guys were known for a lot. A rival Serenio game member, Carlos Truco Lopez, pulled up to the Termite's gang territory and was trying to collect taxes from him. Well, Puppet and Termite wasn't having it. Things didn't get too crazy that night, but it did spark a war between them and it ended deadly for some of the 18th Street gang rivals. On the night of September 4th, 1994, Termite and another shooter were weighed on a narrow alley in Westlake neighborhood of Los Angeles, California. And if you know LA, certain areas have small alleyways, making it hard to speed, maneuver, and impossible for two cars to get through if they're going in opposite directions. This is the perfect setup location for the two. At around midnight, Lopez and his girlfriend pulled up into the alley, and before the SUV could get out of the alley, Termite and another gunner aimed the AK-47s and let off several shots, killing Lopez and his girlfriend. After the shooting, Termite was promoted to shot caller for the 18th Street's Columbia Little Psychos. This promotion gave him the power to do whatever he wanted within the areas that he was pretty much operating, and he made the most out of it. Termite kept the flow of drugs coming exclusively from his gang, and if you did allow anybody, he would charge rent for the blocks. Due to all this, a lot more of the gang saw a rapid growth in sales of narcotics. Before he ran things, blocks averaged like around one or two grand a week. But when he ran things, man, the numbers jumped to about seven to eight grand a week. But what happens when you get a group of people, especially minorities, starting to make money, whether it's legally or illegally, you get them feds, man. Them feds come knocking. They want to see what's playing out. And that's exactly what happened. FBI started to build an organized crime case against 18th Street. They conducted surveillance against them, tapped their phones, and eventually raided members' houses due to information they found through the wiretaps. Due to all the pressure from the feds and the rumors spreading around about certain 18th Street members snitching, particularly Termite, Puppet put out a green light on him, which is basically a move to have him killed. Well, on November 1st, 1999, Termite was returning to his car from his office when several 18th Street members approached the car and fired several shots into the car, killing Termite's driver and severely injuring him in the process. But after all this, the feds knew they had the rat, I mean, the man they needed to bring down the little psychos. He provided the feds with more than enough information to help the investigation. Based off of the information and his testimony, the government indicted 26 members of 18th Street and the Mexican Mafia on charges ranging from extortion to racketeering to murder. Ultimately, 24 of the 26 were convicted and the two remain fugitives to this day. Man, that was definitely a setup from the feds, man. It's crazy. From what I found, the feds really didn't have any evidence on the game up until they set up Termite and then flipped them into a snitch, man. Without him, they definitely would have had anything. Like, it didn't sound like they had no type of information. Man. Just maybe surveillance, but that's about it. Man, cop killers, drug dealers, 18th Street don't fuck around. These some real thug niggas. Bars, nigga. <laughs> nah, seriously. 18th Street don't play. Whether they're extorting, killing, or going to war with their ops, it's always go time for them. Speaking of, let's get into Rivals of 18th Street. Rivals of 18th Street. 18th Street beef hard with the Flancia 13s, which is one of their main rivals. They also beef hard with the Avenues, the Playboy 13s, MS 13s, the Canton 14s, Santa Monica 13, and Temple Street. Violin Boys and the Harpies. They also go at it with the Bloods like the Fruit Town Brims, the Rolling 20 Bloods, and the most wide known rivalry between 18th Street and a blood gang is definitely gonna be with the Black P-Stones. Beef with the Black P-Stone Bloods. Yeah, these niggas have been going at it for 25 plus years and they still fucking hate each other. It's rumored that in 1994, members of the 18th Street Rancho Park clique were trying to set up shop in the Black P-Stones territory and got into a conflict with members of the Black P-Stones. 
an argument ensued and an 18th Street member was murdered, thus starting a cycle of violence between the Bloods and the 18th Street. The Black Pistons from the city joined the conflict. Then in 1996, the Rolling 20 Bloods got involved, and more recently, the Fruit Town Brims joined the conflict against the gang. This war has left several casualties on all ends, and it's pretty much up and it's stuck whenever these two come across with each other. What do y'all think though, man? Is there any chance this will ever end? But I heard talks about them having talks about putting the, the violence aside or coming to the truce, but am I wrong about this, man? Y'all let me know. Was this supposed to be talks about 18th Street and the Black Peace Stones putting their, you know, their differences aside and finally bringing things to an end? Y'all let me know in the comments. Y'all let me know. Prominent figures from the set. 18th Street have a long list of OGs, YGs, and foot soldiers who made the gang what it is today. Trust. We had to be here for another day if I named all these guys and went over the history. But just to go over a few of them, I'm going to just name Wim Vasquez. You already know about him. If you don't, look up his mask. Google this nigga, man. He was, he was a demon. Look him up. Caterino Gonzalez. We know we mentioned him, the cop killer from earlier. Crazy motherfucker. Also, it's some rappers who have been making moves for the set as well. They include Young Dopey. This nigga is hard, bro. His beat selection is definitely appreciated, and his videos are crazy, but most importantly, his flow is hella distinctive. Like, you could tell, dude, he's, he's definitely from the city. He's from LA. But it's not like a cliche sound. You can hear it in his voice when he's rapping. Like, definitely look him up, man. Next is Jista. Definitely the best storyteller out of all these guys I'm naming. This nigga will have you in a movie. A movie just playing out in your head as, the, as he's just rapping, bro. Definitely hard. Buckweed. Yeah, definitely. This guy is like, he killing with the hooks, bro. Yeah, how you like, feel me right? You ready to go catch a body off the hooks? Like, real, real smooth. And the, and the lyrics, same. It's catchy. You feel me? You give you some history about where you come from as well. Other rappers include G Baby 1800, Any Means, and King Lil G. Nigga, if you haven't heard about him, you must have been on that pokey or something this last decade. Like, this nigga is hard. He has a unique flow and definitely stands out amongst other LA rappers. And look, if you don't like his flow, bro, like, just go check his, his videos out for the bad bitches, bro. Bro, this nigga got bitches in his videos. It's like hoes, ass everywhere, my nigga. I promise you. Shit, nigga, if that's the case, man, what do I need to get down, man? Y'all put me on tomorrow, nigga. 1-8, nigga, what's good, nigga? <laughs> Nah, no, y'all definitely go check them out, man. Let me know in the comments if I'm leaving anybody else out. Hey, look, 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 look. Random disclaimer. Nigga, fuck you. <laughs> no, no, not you, family. Not you. I know you part of the game. But to you weirdos saying, oh, where is he from? He from Canada. It's weird. No, nigga, I'm from Long Beach, you stupid mother. Stop asking me that stupid. Honestly, my nigga, like, are we all supposed to sound the same, bro? Like, like that shit is crazy to me that you even mentioned. Like, of course, I ain't no fucking gang encyclopedia. I'm not gonna know all the intel, all the sayings. I might be inaccurate in some of my statements as well. My nigga, let me know in the comments like I say in every other video. Stop it all that hate shit. Nigga, I'm from Long Beach. Don't ask me that dumb shit again. Now back to the story. Current state of 18th Street. The gang marks its territory with graffiti in the 17 square block target area. The city wants to shut down the violence with an unusual injunction, stopping gang members from associating with each other. There are an estimated 300 18th Street gang members in the target area. 18 have been singled out in the injunction request. Only four have an attorney. Despite 18th Street tattoos and eyewitness declarations, they all deny being part of the largest gang in Los Angeles, one of the most violent gangs. Judge Alan Buckner said you can't deny the existence of a gang when its members wear tattoos and throw signs. 18th Street is still one of the most active gangs in Los Angeles, California. It's always some new stories, controversy, or some news popping up about the gang. Starting off as a small unit, the gang quickly grew into a huge criminal organization that has spread out and not only different states in the United States, but also in different countries around the world too. They have subsets in Oregon, Texas, Colorado, Florida, Hawaii, Indiana, Iowa, Iowa, Maryland, Massachusetts, Missouri, Nebraska, New York, North Carolina, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Virginia, Washington, and internationally, they are reported in Australia, Canada, England, France, Germany, Libanian, Peru, 
Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. Shit, man, I'm sure I'm missing a few. But y'all let me know in the comments if I'm missing you, man. Rep your state, rep your country, man. Rep it, rep it. Go ahead, let me know, man. What statue, what country or state y'all coming from, bro? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, because of them being branched off damn near across the world, these games, this game's membership ranges between 70,000 and 80,000 members across the world. That's about 80,000 reasons why you don't want to test these niggas. And you heard the stories, bro. There ain't too much you can do to best these niggas. Bars, nigga. <laughs> That's it for 18th Street, man. How y'all feel about these Vatos? Y'all got any crazy stories about these guys? Any close calls? Y'all let me know in the comments, man. Let's have a conversation about it. Also, did I miss anything? Like anything wrong, man? Y'all let me know in the comments as well. Let's have a conversation about it, man. Let's have a conversation. All right, Danger Game. I'm going to leave y'all this monologue to Young Dopey. There's a turf war out here in these streets. It invades our whole community. A war inherited from one generation to the next. It don't matter if you square, resident, or gang member. Anybody can get it. Anybody can fall victim. Has anybody ever cared to ask the OGs on your block why it happened? I would respect you more if you did. So you knew exactly what you were fighting for. When I was a teenager in juvenile hall, psychologists diagnosed me with PTSD, told me my anger flare-ups and self-destructive behavior came from the traumatic experiences in my neighborhood. I didn't understand it, but now that I'm getting older, I'm starting to understand. This disease is a sickness. This sickness is so much more. I could be at home, chilling with my son, and all I could think about is my boys need me. I could be at the dinner table with my mom, and all I could think about is my boys need me. The anxiety grows. I was in prison for years, always strapped up, on the sideline, waiting for riots to crack off. People think we just come out and act normal. <laughs> I'm a warrior, and I ain't ashamed of it. God bless those in the middle of a war. Y'all stay safe and dangerous out there.